Barakim Habarim, welcome to Messianic Moment Ministries. I'm Stephen Brock. I think you know who you are. <clears throat> and today is the 11th day of May 2023. So let me put my disclaimer out there right now. <clears throat> this message is well, mostly just my opinion. You can disagree or agree. And in either case, if you have biblical justification for your opinion, please let me know. All right, so Shaul is telling the Galatians, this is Galatians 3.29, that if they are in Messiah, then they are also heirs of Abraham. This is his conclusion from his previous explanation about how there is no longer slave or free, Gentile or Jew, but only one type of person when we accept Yeshua as our Messiah, because from that point forward, we are all one in the body of the Messiah. But there is a difference between an adopted child and a blood relative. It doesn't matter on a spiritual level, but it does on a physical one. I am not an adopted son of Abraham because, well, I'm Jewish, through and through, both sides, DNA proven. In fact, I even have the Levitical allele, so I know I am a Levite. If you're not familiar with this, what I just said, years ago they, they did a study of the DNA of Jews whose last name was any form of Levi or Cohen, of course, the males, and match that to other Jewish male DNA samples who didn't have that last name and found there's a definitive difference in the DNA between Jewish males who have a Levitical sounding last name and those who do not. So in other words, there's, there's a Levitical marker in the DNA. <clears throat> All right, so what I'm saying this for is because there's an issue I have with the traditional Christian teaching, which has been promulgated throughout the centuries that adopted children of Abraham are supposedly entitled to all the promises God made to him but are not subject to the Torah because they are well they're in Christ and as such not under the law but under grace <laughs> oh how I hate that saying not under the law but under grace and the reason I hate it is because it has led so many thousands upon thousands of people away from the narrow gate by making them think they can just do whatever they always did and be saved. Don't you know, grace is not exception from obeying the law, but the opportunity to be forgiven when we disobey the law. Does an adopted child in a family get to ignore the rules that the natural born children are subject to following? <laughs> I don't think so. So what makes Christians who claim to be children of Abraham think they can ignore the Torah, which was given by God to the children of Abraham to learn and to live and to teach to the world as God's chosen nation of priests? <laughs> what? Oh, you don't know that? Read Exodus 19.6. God tells, Ab tells Moses excuse me, that the Jewish people are his chosen people to be his nation of priests and obviously to the world and what the priests do they teach you how to worship that's why god gave the children of abraham the torah not just for them but for them to learn live and bring to the world so that everyone can be saved the only real difference between an adopted child of abraham and one that is natural born is a physical one dealing with circumcision, as Shaul explained to the Galatians and also mentioned, as I recall, to the Romans. And circumcision is not needed in order to be saved. Now, if an adopted child wants to undergo that, fine, so long as it's not done to be correct. In other words, to, to earn the right to say they are under the covenant. That's the wrong reason, as, again, Shaul explained to the Galatians. Think about it. Do you really have to be circumcised to be under the same covenant God made with Abraham? My opinion is that the Abrahamic covenant is not as important to a person's relationship with God as the Mosaic covenant is. Why not? <laughs> well, because Abraham was only required to do Brit Milah, whereas Moses was given God's instructions for the way to live our lives, how to worship him, and how to treat each other. If you ask me, any male Gentile who is not circumcised but wants to live as Yeshua, again, that's Jesus, as Yeshua really did live and to do as he really did do, will not have to buy a large package 
of bird's eyes frozen peas. <laughs> it's a real lifesaver after having procedures done down there, believe me. But just obey the Torah as best as he can. Do you know what they call a Jewish baby who isn't circumcised? <laughs> a girl. But the all females who accept Yeshua as their Messiah have to undergo the, the female type of circumcision. That's the kind done to certain Muslim women in order to be an adopted child of Abraham? Of course not. But they are just as saved as the men are. As Shaul pointed out, Abraham was not circumcised when God called him out of the pagan lifestyle he had been living. God accepted Abraham as a righteous person based on his faith and, for the record, his obedience as well. Read Genesis 26, 4 through 5. That's where God renewed the promise he made with Abraham with Isaac and stated that Abraham also obeyed all that God told him to do. Abraham was considered righteous not just because he was faithful, but because he proved his faith through obedience, which, well, many centuries later, that need was confirmed by the brother of the Messiah. Read James 2.17. So, there you have it. Male blood descendants of Abraham have to have the obligation to undergo Barit Milah when they are eight days old, which is good, because if they asked me when I was 35, I think I'd have to think about it. But males who accept Yeshua as their Messiah and want to be adopted children of Abraham do not have to be circumcised in their flesh, only in their heart. I'm sorry, but that's, of course, I'm talking about Gentile males. And for the record, even for Jews, being circumcised in your flesh alone, that doesn't save you. There is a difference between blood descendants of Abraham and adopted children, but that isn't going to make a difference in your salvation. The Abrahamic covenant doesn't provide you what you need to be saved, but the Mosaic covenant does. Well, thank you for being here, and please subscribe to this ministry on my website. There's a subscribe button on the right-hand margin. If you're watching the YouTube, click on the little subscription thing here. Click the notifications, the bells, all that stuff. And while you're on Amazon, next time you're on Amazon, buy my books. They're there. Or get them right off my website. If you like what you hear here, 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 yeah, here, here. If you like what you get from me here, you will like what you get in my books. And share these messages, please, with everyone you know. I don't care if they're believers or not. Send it to them anyway. And finally, join my Facebook group. It's called Just God's Word. But please click. You've got to agree to the rules in order to be allowed to join. And remember, I always welcome your comments that's it for this week so the heat and let me wish you an early shabbat shalom